Okay, um, it's Saturday the 8th of May. Um, it's a long, long way to come for just three nights fishing. Um, we thought we would check this place out. Um, obviously we've been here before loads of times, but not in recent years. We've given it a good four or five, or three or four years um, to, to rest after a lot of pressure or a lot of publicity. Um, and we've come back. Um, basically, there's, there's a fun run going on. Um, there's not too much going on in the park by the looks of it. I'm going to jump on the bike and have a good ride round and see what's going on. Uh, I think we're pretty safe. I think we're pretty safe here for now. Um, water levels up, which is good, which means that I can stash the boat and and it won't get found. So I'm just going to um, have a quick ride down um, and see if I can find any anglers. Um, hopefully there won't be any, in which case we're going to crack on with the fishing. Um, yep, loads to do. Been a long drive. Um, we're going to crack on. Talk to you later. See any carp anglers, which is a good sign. Yeah, amazing. I can't see any carp anglers. Oh, there's a pair of boots here, but I can't see any carp anglers. So, um, definitely a good start. Um, I'm going to go and get my stuff. Amazing. In front of me, I had a four hour physically draining exercise as follows. Stage one, the boat is inflated, loaded with tackle, food, bait, water and the bike and motored two kilometers down to a reed bed where I'm able to stash it safely for the next few hours. Stage two, the bike is unstrapped from the boat and rode two kilometers back to the car. Stage three, the car is then taken off site to where I consider it to be safe. This is a 20 minute car journey along motorways and dual carriageways to a neighbouring town where my French friend lives. Stage 4. En route to securing the car, I stop off at a snag tree at another huge expanse of water where I've caught carp previously. It's a steep descent down to the water but worth the effort if I hope to catch something over the weekend. There aren't any obvious signs of carp, so I bait with five kilos of scope eggs and leave the bait to do its business. Stage five, as an alternative backup, I stop in at the local canal a few kilometers away, where I bait a section of near side margin with a further five kilos of scope egg squid. I now have two prime backup options in the event things don't work out on priority number one. Stage six, the car is parked safely away from the lake and I bike another 45 minutes back to the lake along cycle paths and bridleways. The four hour ordeal is both physically and mentally draining, but absolutely necessary if I want to maximize my chances on such limited time. By the time the boat is unpacked, it's early evening, so realistically I only have time to find and bait a few spots for the following day on this day-only venue. <coughs> this was my first trip of the year, and just sitting in the boat and enjoying the sunset made me feel alive again. I was born a fisherman.
it's 20 past three on Easter Sunday afternoon. Um, first time we've had a little bit of a ripple on the water um, today. Um, I know I know I'm not in the best spot. Um, that goes without saying if you've not had any takes by this point of the day. Um, I'm fairly certain all the bait is still out there from last night. Um, time will tell when, when we reel one of the rods in later on, we'll see whether or not there's been any attention. Um, we can't panic yet. We, we'll give it until this evening. We'll top the spots up and I'm gonna um, stash the boat in a different area and actually cycle back to the car where I've got two rods in the car still. Um, and, and then drive over to the canal where I baited yesterday and we'll give it probably sort of 11 p.m. through till 6 a.m. so we'll give it seven hours over there before then um, dropping the car back and then cycling over here. It's a mammoth journey logistically all of this is such an effort um, but I've got to catch something and I've got to make use of the nights um, you know, if, if I if I don't have anything today and then just stay here and don't have anything tomorrow, um, all of a sudden your sort of three night session is pretty much over. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm not massively confident here, but at least the, um, we've got a ripple on the water now. Um, so anything anything can happen. Over and out for now. Okay, it's um, it's quarter past six. I've got a couple of swimmers out over my left hand rod. They keep clipping the line. They're totally oblivious to the fact they're right over the top of my braid. But anyway, I'm, I'm just sorting out the rucksack with all the bare, with all the essentials that I need to take back with me. I've got another um, bed chair and um, little little tackle box with me. I just need to take the camera equipment back or some of the camera equipment, but I'll take all the cameras, but I'll leave a tripod here um, with the view that we'll be back over here um, just after first light. I really haven't got so much to report. It's been a very quiet day. Um, I do not think there have been many carp around this area of the lake. Um, but anyway, all for now, over now. Under normal circumstances on such a large lake, it is obviously more favourable to find the carp first. But with just three days of fishing, there's every possibility you'll not see a single thing for the entire trip. So there has to be an element of forward thinking and risk taking on where you might think the carp will be at this time of year and under these conditions. On this occasion, my opening gambit had been entirely wrong and the first day had been lost. Okay, back at the car, um, it's about quarter to 10 now. So basically, wound all four rods in. Um, as I was bringing the third one in, a flipping 30 pound cat to grab the boilie. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, I got all the rods in, had the catfish, all the boilies were still intact. Far left hand rod in the slightly deeper spot. Um, there was a little bit of nibbling going on, but nothing too serious. So I think most of the bait is still out there. The craze might have taken away a little bit, but we're still early April. I, I think a lot of it's left there. So there's no carp in that area. I'm steaming up there. So stash, stash the stuff. Um, we're going to go to a different section of the lake around the snags now um, tomorrow. But tonight we're either going to stop in at the canal. I'm just going to go down to that spot in the snags and um, see if um, stick the head, stick the lamp on, and see if I can spot any carp. If I can see any carp there, I'll just take one rod down there and do the night there. Otherwise, we'll go to the canal and just put two in. Over and out for now. I managed to survive the steep descent in the dark, but only tench, bream, and perch could be seen over the prebay, so it was onwards to the canal. Fortunes were no better on the canal, the sluice gates were opened at some point during the night and even the near side margin became unfishable. So at some crazy hour I packed away once again, moved the car to safety and biked back over to the lake to be set up for first light. A move from the previous day was a must, so I travelled several hundred metres down the lake to a snaggy area where I'd fished before. I wasn't going to be fishing by night, but I didn't want any attention from the park guards or the guard de pêche, so I kept myself and my equipment as hidden as possible. 
Clear spots amongst the snags and weed had been GPSed on my Garmin four years previously, so this was the obvious place to start while I watched the water for any signs of carp. As the sun came over the hills to my amazement, I watched a number of small carp swim into the bay where I'd moored the boat. These were mainly small commons, but the odd better fish was seen amongst them, although these better fish were avoiding the real shallow water and sticking to the slightly deeper channels. A couple of rods were immediately wound in and flicked out into the margins, followed by a few handfuls of Scopex squid boilies. Just as I was positioning the final rod, one of the long rods was away. moved over to the snag lake um, there were carp coming into this bay that I'm actually sitting in a couple of better ones but mainly small commons I was convinced that the open water would produce the bigger carp absolutely convinced of it and um, anyway I got a twitchy take and this carp must be dulled they're just waking up it's a real big one. It's gone 57 with the um, 57 with the um, sling. So that's a low, low 50. Beautiful fish that probably hasn't been caught many times. There we are. Recognise it straight away. This has put on a lot of weight, this carp. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a well known. Okay. What a fish. What a beautiful carp that is. I honestly didn't think this fish was this big. I honestly think there could be some of the big mirrors in this snag lake. Anyway. Literally 10 minutes later, we've got another 50. This is a 52 pound common, quite unbelievable. All those hours of preparation when you've got such limited fishing time make the difference. All the rigs were made up. We're fishing 20 pound skin link with size five claw hooks and double 18 or 20 mil Scopex squid baits. Um, they are having it like you would not believe. This came no more than three metres from the bank. Loads of small fish coming through, but I've put this in a slightly different spot further out. 30 baits, 30 Scopex squid 20s. 
52 and 53 on a weekend session. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. And given this lake is many, many hundreds of acres, this is an incredible result. Okay, um, my goodness me, I've taken my watch off. It's, it's mid-afternoon, found the carp, my good God. Um, so, same margin rod's gone again, um, and we've got another 50. This is the third 50 of the day. I can't believe I've had three 50s today. Another common, smallest 51.5, longer one this one. Let's see if we can hold her up for you. That is an immaculate common. Wonderful. Right, let's do the other side. Oh my God. It's amazing. Fishing can seem easy when you find them, particularly over in France. Many, like I said before, many, many hundreds of acres. And um, we did a full day on the other part and there was no sign of any carp, apart from the catfish, that was all we had. We come over here, one night on the canal, didn't catch anything. And we come over here and they are here. They're not rolling, it's too early for them to be rolling. They're just cruising through and feeding, picking up boilies, picking up Scopex squids. Can you actually believe this? Um, probably see a little bow wave going down behind me. Um, there's a mirror of about five pounds and a common of about eight pounds that have started spawning. We're only on the 9th of April and it's been a cold spring, but it's been warm today. It's been up to about 19 degrees and it's ignited them into spawning this early. I can't believe it. 
they are the only the small ones um yeah crazy how early sometimes i mean it's only a foot deep so it probably warms up very quickly in there but um yeah fortunately the big ones are a long long way off yet Okay, last knockings, can't believe it. Look, final rod in the water. Light is failing us. Um, and we've got the biggest fish so far. Can't believe how big this fish is. It's gone 65 with the sling. This was a solid fight. It's got the biggest mouth. And I don't even know which fish it is. Um, anyway, anyway, let's hold her up. Beautiful mirror. So heavy. Oh. God. Oh. Oh. God. That's when you know you're holding a 60 pounder. Look at the size of it. Let's move the tail around. My God. Oh. Real solid fish, this one. Real solid. Okay. I can't believe. I'm literally underarm flicking them about 15 yards out. 30 Scopex squids. A little bit of test bait in there as well, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, and um, obviously no lines out there, just the one rod. Definitely helped because the moment two or three lines went out there. Uh -uh. Oh God, if you can hold him properly. So yeah, just over 60 pounds, can't believe it. Three fifties and a 60 um, in the last, um, in, well, basically in the last 12 hours. Um, I can't believe it. So the moment matey boy over the other side goes, um, we'll put some bait in, get everything ready for a first light this morning. It's typical, isn't it? I didn't have the blooming GoPro on. Um, for the first time all day um, when that fish ran off. Um, it was the most spectacular 15 minute fight. Real, real rock solid hook hold. So um, these carp are properly on the boily munch early, early April um, before all the nuisance species are up and about. Nine times out of 10, um, it, could have been, it could have been a spectacular blank and I would have been cursing myself all the way through to the next trip that it didn't work out for me and why didn't I go for somewhere easier. But then when something like this happens from a, from a very, very large lake, um, Le Grand Lac, as the French would call it, um, when something like this happens, it makes every minute of time at home mucking about with rigs and making sure you've got everything just spot on baits are perfectly balanced everything is just right so that when you get down here you're not fanning about blooming tying baits on or anything they're all wrapped they're all ready to go before you leave so qu quite simply it's a case of just setting up the scope or the dwarf and just putting the rod out there knowing full well that everything is set Amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm on cloud nine, I need a beer, but I haven't got any here. Um, let's get sorted. Um, eight o'clock, eight o'clock French time. Winner.
Okay, there are small fish in here as well. I've been watching a lot of these in the margins. Um, there we are. Okay. This is about 30 pound, maybe, maybe 32, 33. Plump fish. Um, so yeah, put a load of bait out last night. Um, wound the rods in and then I've just put the rods out this morning topped up with 20 test bait and a couple of scopex squids and um, yeah maybe within about an hour and a half or so first light first fish of the morning lovely yeah probably about 30 pound Okay, um, just to run you through the rigs that I'm using, um, which is obviously a really important part of everything. All of these are made up before I come out here. Um, obviously you don't put the baits on, but um, I will put the baits on and then wrap the baits in um, cling film, just so you don't lose any moisture because they're balanced so that if you're lowering from the boat, that will drop away like so. Um, but, but I mean, you know, you, you normally you're in a rush to do things. It's normally getting dark, so everything is ready um, for these trips. So, so let's just talk, talk through the mechanics of this. That's 20, 25 pound skin link, two inches um, strip back there, um, blob of putty in the middle of the rig, um, and that's probably about 11, 10 to 12 inches. Um, I, I'm airing on the side of length, as always with, with big baits. Um, you want this bait to, if, if that, these big carp, when they suck, they suck it right back. Um, they're not finicky. So um, you want enough length there to ensure that as that's sitting on the bot bottom, as that carp sucks it in, the hook is going deep into the mouth. Um, if, you're, if you're on a six, seven inch hook link with a long hair like that, that there's a risk there. Obviously, if it, if it sucks it from that direction, you're not gonna have any problems. But if it sucks it from that direction, there's quite a reasonable chance there that it's gonna suck the baits up to about there and not really get the hook in its mouth. So by lengthening it, You've got plenty of movement here for all of that bait to go up um, in, and the hook to go up into the mouth. Um, these days I slip D it most of the time and, unless I'm using a really big bait. Um, this is a couple of couple of 18 or a couple of 20 mil scopex squids, um, waft, wafters that is. I have just put a little bit of um, lead wire in there to make it a little bit heavier um, and then that's a nice big size five claw um, and then and then a bit of shrink tube there it's not kinked in there's just a very slight um, intern there I don't want that to be going in any more than that because with an in-pointed hook you're closing the gate too much um, oh, lovely and sharp so yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice and simple, very robust. Um, yeah, so that, that's basically got about five mil of movement there, up and up and down the up and down the shank. Um, so yeah, very robust. Um, and, and let's just mention why I'm using double baits. Um, most people most people will come here. They would stick a bottom bait on, and then they would put a topper on it of a different, a bright colour maybe a yellow or a pink or whatever. Um, that's fine, um, don't get me wrong, you're gonna catch a load of carp on that, but this lake is full of these roach rud bream hybrid type things. Don't know exactly what species they are, but they love boilies, and if you've got a small one on top there, they are gonna attack it and attack it and attack it. Um, they might not hook themselves, but what they might do is um, push this bottom bait tight down against the shank, uh, against the bottom, not giving you any movement, or 
they might just rip it all off or they might tangle it so keep a, that's part of the reason why I'm on a swivel there on a slip D is that if there is any attention that bottom bait can't get pushed closer to the hook but if you've got a small um, fluoro on there um, you know you when you're leaving your rods out you don't want any aggravation from them if, if, if one hooks itself on a big lead um, it could be there for hours disturbing the swim scaring any carp away um, just just try and eliminate the risk don't don't use little pop-ups when there are roach and rudder around I know they catch lots of big carp but um, to be honest with you these carp are swimming through you know, they're, they're coming through and they're eating with confidence so um, a double bait like that avoids a lot of the nuisance species um, it's still just about too early on here for the shats and the crayfish thank god um, but yeah that's 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 the mechanics that's what's caught me 350s and um, a 60 in this weekend session okay um, 3 30 in the afternoon on tuesday uh, just i was just thinking about whether or not i just pack up now and go um anyway anyway um yeah three three in the afternoon second fish of the day um <clears throat> Clearly, there's far less around than there were yesterday, but we've got a lovely, oh, lovely 41 pound common. There we are. Look how big that tail is. It's got a funny, almost, almost a deformity on the tail there. Um, see that on the tail? It's almost like growing a, it's like it's growing a second tail. By late afternoon of the third day of fishing, I called it time on the session. I had to repeat the process I'd endured three days earlier, but in reverse. The ordeal would take me over three hours and had to be completed before the park gates were locked on darkness. This would be followed by an eight hour journey home through the night as I had to be in the office for 8am the following morning. You have to ask yourself, was it worth it? Of course it was. I'd repeat the process 20 times if it meant catching massive wild carp. It was an Easter weekend to remember.